Are you Good satisfied evening, with what the, what the Attorney General says that the uh, Department of Justice is doing? No, of course not. And this retaliation against whistleblowers who came forward to our committee uh, is the guy who was kind of presiding over the security division at the time that this took place, where they take the security clearance from the people who are the whistleblowers who are giving us information to make life just a living hell for these individuals. Uh, that same guy is now in charge of the Miami field office, running the investigation for the Justice Department, the FBI, into the assassination attempt on, on President Trump. So that's a problem. And I would step back to Greta. Should we be surprised? I don't think we should be surprised that the same FBI who spied on President Trump's campaign, the same FBI who said if you're a parent showing up at a school board meeting, you need investigated, the same FBI said if you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist, the same FBI that can't tell us who leaked the Dobbs decision, who put the pipe bombs on January 6th at the Capitol, and uh, other, and who put cocaine at the White House? Should we be surprised that that FBI retaliates against whistleblowers who come give us information? So that's what this hearing we're having tomorrow is about. And I, I think most Americans don't have a whole lot of confidence in what Merrick Garland says about this investigation into the assassination attempt on President Trump. Well, the, well there are two issues. One is incompetence, which is which we know we can't have when it comes to security of the president or anything or national security. Anything. But the other is whether it's diabolical. And I still have not recovered from the 51 so-called intel yeah. experts on the eve of the 2020 election claimed that the Hunter laptop story was Russian misinformation when they could have walked down the street. The FBI had had, had the laptop for nine months since December. And then, you know, and, and then to say that, this, I mean, you can't even say that sort of an innocent mistake because let me play for you that what but about three or four, about a week later that then Canada Joe Biden did with that false 51 statement. Let's listen to it. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. They have said that this is, has all the care. Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except the, his and his good friend, Rudy Gianni. You mean the laptop is now no. another Russia, Russia, Russia hoax? And that's exactly be. what, is this that's where exactly going? what this is where he you know, you know, Mr. Chairman, what's so scandalous about that is that the one who sort of put this in, in play, this, this letter together, yeah. is now our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. And right. every, all those 51 still have security clearances to do exactly what they want to continue to do. No, I know, I know, and it was the work of our committee that got this information out there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Couple all that though with what we learned last week, Greta. Now we learned that Iran actually hacked the Trump campaign, got an internal dossier on uh, Vice Presidential Candidate J.D. Vance, Senator Vance, 271 pages, and somehow that information gets to the Harris campaign and winds up in the press. Now, imagine if that were flipped around. Imagine if it was the other way around. So Iran hacks the Harris campaign, gets a dossier on Tim Walls, and it winds up in the Trump campaign and makes it in the press. Can you, there, there would already be a special counsel. So this shows you the double standard and the bias in this town. Is it, is it incompetence? Uh, is it comes or is it diabolical? Because I do have a real I, problem with what they did in that letter. Because that was diabolical, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just a strong bias against conservatives. I think it's political favoritism. It seems to me that's where all the, the, the facts point to. And then go back to this issue where this, this individual who's now char uh, in charge of the Miami field office of the FBI, who was overseeing the security division here in D.C. when this retaliation happened against these whistleblowers. I mean, th this guy is down there running that, the, the investigation. I mean, it was obviously a bias when he, what he did uh, when he was head of the security division because we have a questionnaire that was used. And the questionnaire, when they're trying to get to the bottom of these issues, they're doing these investigations, internal investigations. The questionnaire says, does this individual like President Trump? What is this individual's position on the COVID vaccine? I mean, asking those kind of total political questions. So we know it's a political bias that's driving it all. It's not incompetence. Is it, I want to take sort of a professional privilege is that you mentioned the Miami office of the FBI. They are working, this is just my own personal grudge, they're working with the Birmingham FBI office, and I'm convinced that they covered up something that, uh, that they no, did that you. led to a second murder. I, and so, the, I, so and I asked them for freedom of information. They said, I'll get my information in five years, so don't get me started on the FBI about no, cover-ups. Anyway. I'll, we, we've been trying to help you with that information, get that information, which we think is important as well. Well, I'm not giving up on it. Anyway, Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir. Thank you, you sir. You bet, Greta. Take care.